we were sailing along on the light day. We could hear the voices ringing. They seemed to say, You have stolen her heart. Now don't go. Olive's husband, Reginald Justice, was born in 1895 and died in 1953. Reg had many working roles in his life, including blacksmith and general boatman. He controlled rabbits for local farmers, operated the car punt for 15 years, and had considerable mechanical and boat repairing ability. He was a carpenter, a house builder and finished his working life as a cow's night watchman. He and Olive were married at Paran in 1916 during World War I. Olive and Reg had two children, Joyce Zender Isabel, who was born in 1917 and died aged 21 in 1938, and Roy David, born in 1919, who died in 1992. <laughs> This is an account dated 1919 to Mrs. Harris of Ventnor, Phillip Island, for blacksmith work on horseshoes and jinker done by Reg, then aged 24. With few good roads and no cars on Phillip Island back then, horses were the main transport and used in many ways on farms. Blacksmiths were essential members of any community in that age of the horse. Later in life, about 1927, my husband Reg Justice and myself and our two children went back to New Haven. My husband was a good boatman and he ran the punt which carried about four cars launch with a strong engine. That boat was called the Sea Lion. Later on, a larger boat was built by Mr Newman which could carry about eight cars. Before the first bridge was built at New Haven, my husband crossed cars there for about 15 years. Reg bought from Mr John Cleland of Woolamai House a 35-foot two-ended whaleboat, which was used at Henty's whaling station in the 1800s. The museum in Melbourne wanted this boat, but Reg cut one end of it and put a six-cylinder engine in it, which was taken from a Chandler car we owned. It had a Pikes Peak motor in it, which had won a championship for hill climbing in America. And this boat was used for towing the timber and the piles for the building of the first bridge. When the bridge was built, and we left New Haven to go to Bairnsdale and sail, for the building of the American servicemen's cottages, that boat was left behind. I don't know what became of it, but I would very much like to know. On race days, when they had the races, car races this time, when we had the races before, it was for horses. The car race track was about eight miles around the roads, and each corner 
had a special name. Most years the road races were run on a right-handed rectangular course. Those races started at Heaven Corner. Next was Young and Jackson's Corner, named after the famous hotel in Melbourne. Possibly the public could buy drinks from a booth at Young and Jackson's Corner. The next corner was named Gentle Anne or Annie Corner after Anne Graydon who lived adjacent on a farm with her husband and children. The last corner was Hell Corner, called that because it had no camber and was extremely difficult to negotiate. The finish was near Heaven Corner, which may have had that name because it was up a long hill from Hell Corner. The very basic pits were located at the Pines Farm at Harris Hill on Ventnor Road. And on race days, my husband would cross maybe 300 cars, race cars and others. He would work up until 11 o'clock at night time to get them back again after the races were over. That made quite a bit of excitement in the place. We were sailing along on moonlight day. We could hear the voices ringing. They seemed to say, "You have stolen her." 